good morning let's continue with the topic asexual reproduction so in my previous classes i did mention about the types of uh, asexual reproduction in different organisms i was taking examples of unicellular organisms multicellular organism algae as one example how it will carry out asexual reproduction fungi as another example how it is going to show the asexual reproduction so these are some of the aspects regarding the asexual reproduction moving further by taking few examples in the plant kingdom you can see the development of some special structures which are present in the plants and when these structures they have been separated from the plant body and they have been propagated then that develops into individual plant for example if you want to grow or cultivate hibiscus plant rose plant you are going to get a twig a small branch of the hibiscus and you are going to put it into the soil right and that cut piece of the plant that is a twig that branch develops into new organism new plant so such kind of propagation where the detached part of the plant or the cut part of the plant it is going to develop into a new individual or a new plant this is called as vegetative that unit is called as vegetative propagule and this process is called as vegetative propagation so next type of asexual reproduction is vegetative propagation vegetative vegetative propagation in vegetative propagation as i already told it is a cut piece of a plant which is detached and when it is been introduced into the soil it develops into a new individual plant so such structures are called as vegetative propagules and this process is called as vegetative propagation and there are types first for example i am going to take grass grass all of you have might observed the grass grass it has got a cylindrical stem cylindrical stem and shows the fibrous root system which develops at the nodal region nodal region and it is going to have leaves leaves develops on the stem and grass is going to show the parallel veneation parallel veneation like this this is the structure of grass right grass this is the stem and stem always it is found moving horizontally to the surface of soil this is soil this is the stem of the grass and these are the leaves leaves stem is found moving horizontally on the surface of soil wherever there is presence of nodes nodes these are the solen structures they are called as nodes wherever there is presence of node at the soil part where it is having the contact it develops roots whereas in the aerial part of the above part top part it is going to develop the leaves so this is the characteristic feature of grass and here if this particular entity or this unit you can observe here i am excising this unit means i am making cut of this unit i am going to separate this unit and i will take it into new place and put on the soil and again from this cut piece from this cut piece what i took from the plant mother plant it is going to develop further into a new grass plant new grass plant now the detached part this detached part it is called as vegetative vegetative propagule propagule if you observe which is this detached part actually involved in the development of new plant it is the stem it is the stem so here you can see an example where the stem it is been modified into the vegetative propagule serving for vegetative propagation so like this we in your pu classes you have got different examples to study where we go for the classification of the stem 
based on the habitat of the plants and its modifications different types of vegetative propagules you are going to learn along with the different types of vegetative propagules you are going to learn the examples so this is regarding the vegetative propagation and another common example is the ginger the cut piece of the ginger which is containing the node when you separate it and put into the soil it generates into new plant so all these are examples for vegetative propagules what you can observe in the plant kingdom next moving on to the comparative account between the asexual and sexual reproduction asexual and sexual reproduction if you compare which one is more beneficial to organism whether it is asexual reproduction or sexual reproduction the answer is it is the sexual reproduction which seems to be more beneficial for organism why because the offsprings or the new individuals which are born out of sexual reproduction they will be having some unique characters or there will be chance of getting new characters both the parental characters will be merged and one more new character possibility is there it may arrive or it may develop in the new individual offspring so this appearance of a new character in the offspring it will lead to development of some unique features in that newborn offspring which will enable that organism to survive in the changing and challenging environment as the environmental conditions changes as per the environmental demands there should be modification in the organism then only that organism can survive in the challenging and changing environment so this is been contributed by the sexual reproduction but not by means of asexual reproduction so sexual reproduction or the organisms which are employing this type of reproduction so they have got an added advantage that is there is variability or there is development of new characteristic features which may enable the offspring to survive in the changing and challenging environment so this is regarding the comparative account between the asexual and the sexual reproduction and few exceptions for the reproduction to be considered as the characteristic feature of living thing it's that some animals such as mules or worker honeybees or some infertile couples they won't be able to produce their offspring then based on this criteria itself reproduction itself we cannot come to a conclusion we cannot judge whether the thing is living or dead so here in case of a reproduction it is not mandatory that if you want to decide it as living reproduction is essentially it is not like that so it is not an essential criteria so these are uh, regarding the types of uh, reproductions and their uh, varieties including the examples next moving on to the type and the type of characteristic feature of living things or organisms what we call it as excretion excretion Ex excretion is the process by which the living organisms they will remove the waste products as and then when they are found inside the body this removal of the waste substances it is called as excretion excretion is essential because if the waste materials which are produced inside the body if they are not released out if they are not thrown out from the animal or the plant then that becomes harmful for the body of that organism that is called as toxic that becomes that particular thing it becomes toxic or it becomes harmful for the body of the organism so that is the reason why the toxic materials should be or the waste materials should be thrown out away from the body as and when it shit is formed then the general or the common type of waste products which are formed in the plants and animals they include first one is carbon dioxide urea uric acid ammonia ammonia so these are the most basic type of waste products which are formed in the body of living animals urea uric acid and ammonia these three together we call it as nitrogenous nitrogenous waste 
nitrogenous waste because they contain nitrogen in them they are the nitrogenous waste if these compounds they start accumulating in the body if the concentration of urea uric acid ammonia carbon dioxide if it starts increasing in the body then that will lead to toxic effect that is going to alter the physiological functions of the body and the animal the plant is going to die so to overcome this difficulty excretion is important and it is essential for the existence of life then the next question appears so what is the origin for the development of such huge or enormous waste products so every second we are giving out we are exhaling out the carbon dioxide molecules from where it has been produced so in urine we are excreting the urea so what is the source for the urea so all these waste products they are the resultant of the metabolic event which occurs inside the living system in the metabolism i mentioned that the definition where you can see the total chemical reactions which have been aided by the enzymes what we call it as metabolism metabolism two types anabolic pathway and catabolic pathway constructive process destructive process due to the metabolic activities the chemical reactions which take place in the organism and with the help of enzymes so many waste materials will be produced and these waste materials they are the resultant of the metabolic activities so these are the concepts what we would include regarding the excretion so in your pu classes you are going to deal a uh, separately excretion in case of uh, plants how the plants they show excretion how the animal system it is going to show excretion starting from the phylum first one porifera till the development because porifera it has got cellular level of organization like cell enterita cytophora have got tissue level of organization and diploblastic animals later we have got organ organ system level of organization as the complexity of the organism goes on increasing then there will be development of very high and improved models or versions of the systems of the excretory system so all these things you are going to learn in your pu classes for time being in the bridge course we will explain regarding the excretion what is the definition of excretion and why excretion is necessary what and all things or the components will be excreted if not they are excreted then what will happen to these compounds in the body what is the consequence of accumulation of these many compounds in the body it will be dealt in the bridge course what i did just now and next moving on to another feature or the property of living things is called nutrition 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 it is the process of production or uptaking the food and getting assimilated or being used up that means assimilation that means used up or assimilated in the body of living things this process is called as nutrition in the life process chapter in your 10th standard you have learned that nutrition how the amoeba is going to extend its pseudopodia and catch hold of food and it is going to engulf and digest it right so all these things will be dealt under nutrition coming to the classification of living things based on the nutrition because before going to the nutrition nutrition is one of the unique or very strict characteristic feature which is exhibited only by the living things nutrition is cannot or nutrition process it cannot be shown by non living things the process by which food is intaken to harvest the energy by the process whether it may be by the movement or by engulfing what you saw in the amoeba or maybe due to the photosynthetic activity whatever the procedures may be final thing is it should get the food and the energy that is called as nutrition and it is the characteristic and unique feature of living things and next is the classification of the organisms based on the mode of nutrition based on the mode of nutrition based on the mode of nutrition organisms their mode of nutrition or the organisms they are classified into two types first type they are called as phototrophs second type of organisms are called as heterotrophs let me write it as autotrophs 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 and 
heterotrophs. So these are the two classes of organisms based on the mode of nutrition. Autotrophs, these are the organisms which can prepare their own food. Auto means self, self, self. Tropes means having. So these are the animals or the plants like animals means you can include small unicellular tiny organisms which may be protist or bacteria so they are autotropic in nature that means they can prepare their own food so again based on the type of the autotropism exhibited by the autotropes autotropes again they are of two types first type we call it as photo autotropes second type we call it as chemo autotrophs chemo autotrophs so these are the two subdivisions of the autotropic mode of nutrition in case of the first one of photo autotrophs name itself is giving a hint photo means light photo means light with the help of light if the organism is capable of preparing its own food then we call such organisms as phototropic organisms example for phototropic organisms algae algae plants and bacteria let me write it as cyanobacteria cyanobacteria in further classes i'll explain about the first cyanobacteria okay classes of cyanobacteria the structure of nostoc cannabina all those things i'll explain photo autotrophs algae plants cyanobacteria you can see they are photo autotrophs they can prepare their own food with the help of sunlight by the process called as photosynthesis photosynthesis if you look at the process of photosynthesis there will be development of the oxygen as well as the food so the balanced equation of the photosynthesis is 6TO2 plus 12H2O in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll will give rise to glucose C6H12O6 plus 6O2 oxygen gas is evolved and 6 H2O. It is a balanced equation of photosynthesis where you can see the development of or the production of food in the form of glucose. Glucose is a type of carbohydrate, simple sugar. Glucose will be produced. So, such process where sunlight is being utilized for the development of or production of food, we call it as photoautotropes. Next process is the chemoautotropes or chemoautotropism. In chemoautotropes, you can see the bacteria, bacteria such as green bacteria, green sulfur bacteria, purple sulfur bacteria, all these are examples for the chemoautotropic mode of nutrition or chemoautotropes. These group of organisms, what I mentioned, they are going to break the chemical compounds to get the energy which will be influenced by the mode of nutrition what they are adopting for example h2s hydrogen sulfide you know that hydrogen sulfide is a gas h2s let me write the structure like this hydrogen sulfide sulfate bacteria this bacteria is going to break these bonds which exist between the sulfur and hydrogen sulfur and hydrogen bonds these bonds will be broken as the bacteria breaks the bond energy will be released that energy will be captured by the bacteria and used for its life processes such kind of the mode of nutrition we call it as chemoautotropic mode of nutrition and in chemoautotropic mode of nutrition again we have got two types first one is organotropes lithotropes organotropes organotropes first variety it is called organotropes organotropes and litho lithotropes organotropes 
organotrophs these are the category of animals which are going to use organic matter organic matter to derive energy they break the bonds present in between the atoms of the organic compounds and whatever energy is released that energy will be utilized for their existence to run their metabolic activities and life process whereas other sort of uh, animals what we call it as lithotropes litho means rock rock something which is not organic we call it as inorganic right that is called that is the word litho means litho means basically it refers to rock so these group of organisms mainly the bacteria they use inorganic compounds such as hydrogen sulfide and other inorganic compounds and the inorganic compounds they have been utilized by the bacteria to harvest the energy the bonds which are present between the atoms of the inorganic compounds the bonds will be broken and the energy what is released will be utilized by the bacteria such mode of nutrition is called as lithotropism and the organisms are referred to as lithotropes so this is regarding the autotropism classification subclassification and different examples and explanation for each subdivision of autotropic mode of nutrition next type of mode of nutrition what you can observe is heterotropes heterotropes they cannot prepare their own food again in heterotropes we have got classification such as saprophytes parasites saprophytes and parasites heterotropes means best example we human beings we depend on the other plant origin or the animal origin or the microbial origin food material we cannot produce a food material by our own like that of plants what they do by doing photosynthesis in case of heterotropism saprophytes these saprophytes are the group of organisms mainly they are microorganisms such as the fungi and bacteria they grow on dead and decaying organic matter they grow on the dead bodies and they cause the decomposition or putrefaction decomposition of the dead body and this process is called as the decomposition saprophytes are the organisms which are involved in the decomposition of the organic matter by breaking the organic matter by acting on the dead and decaying organic parts they are going to extract the energy that is in case of the saprophytes next group of uh, organisms what we call it as parasites mode of nutrition is called as parasitism 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 means one plant or animal it will be in the living condition and few other animals or organisms they get attached to it and they are going to take the nutrition for example tapeworm which is present in the intestine roundworm ascaris lumbricoides roundworm which is again present in the intestine and uh, mainly some other uh, infectious bacteria they are called as uh, parasites parasites so these parasites they are going to take the food from the plant or animal when they are in living condition only but they will not kill the plant or animal so the animal or plant on which they are acting or from which they are extracting the nutrients that animal or plant it is called as host h o s t that is called as host and the animal which is taking the advantage which is draining out the blood such as leech which is sucking the nutrients so such kind of uh, interaction what the animal which is having that we call it as parasite so we have got animal parasites plant parasites animal parasites and plant parasites in case of animal parasites already i have given two examples one is the tapeworm another one is the round worm which is present in the intestine these are the two classical examples you can remember and next coming to the plant parasites so it is very difficult very rarely you find such examples in case of plant kingdom in case of uh, plant uh, parasites uh, again where you can see plant being acting as a uh, parasite that is called as a cascota cascota plant cascota plant it is a chlorophyllous plant it doesn't contain chlorophyll it then cannot carry out photosynthesis it will be thread like thing it will be found around the bushy herbs it will stick to the stem and it will extract the nutrients so plant parasite plant parasite 
एग्जाम्पल एग्जाम्पल कस्कुटा एग्जाम्पल कस्कुटा कस्कुटा इट इज समवाट थ्रेड लाइक प्लांट थ्रेड लाइक प्लांट दिस थ्रेड लाइक प्लांट बॉडी इट इज हैविंग स्मॉल प्रोट्रोशन ऑन इट सर्फेस स्मॉल आउट ग्रोथ ऑन इट सर्फेस सो दे कॉल्ड एज हस्टोरिया Hastoria. So, with the help of sharp structures called as Hastoria, they stick to the stem of a host, host plant. They stick to the surface of the host plant, and this Hastoria, it will penetrate inside the stem. It will puncture the stem of another plant. and it will enter inside into deep tissues and it gets connected to xylem and phloem and from the xylem and phloem the sastoria it will derive the nutrients it will drain the water it will take the sucrose which is available or the food which is available in the phloem so like this you can see such structures called as hastoria which is present in the cascuta cascuta is an example for a plant parasite a plant being parasite on another plant so it is a beautiful example what we can quote for the plant parasitism so this is regarding the next component of the characteristic feature that is nutrition which decides whether the thing is living or not so these are few characteristic features what i discussed regarding the living things and how we are going to differentiate between the living and non living things so in the next class let me continue with the few more topics related to the bridge course so i will conclude my session here thank you